Okay. Uh, thanks very much. So, um, I'm the optical guy here. So I, I need to mount a spirited defense amongst <laughs> all of these RF guys, right? <laughs> so, um, so I titled my talk, uh, shamelessly, uh, The Challenge of Time Distribution in Optical Fiber. So I'd like to point out a couple of things to you, first of all. Firstly, that the world is driven today largely by uh, these guys um, who, got who got a Nobel Prize exactly 100 years apart, um, which is, of course, Marconi uh, and Charles Cow uh, for, for the optical fiber. Now, um, the optical fiber will do um, something like tens of terahertz of bandwidth, each fiber. So that's the first thing to, to note, right? We're, we're talking many orders of magnitude different here between wireless capability and the optical capability, which is not a surprise because uh, the, the optical um, wavelength um, is something like uh, nearly 10 to the 6 times smaller. So I think you kind of wonder why we've got these two guys here, one doing wireless and one doing optical and not a lot in the middle. And so connecting those two seems like it might be a good idea. And the other thing that's interesting about, um, about optics um, is shown here, this, this is actually a fiber laser cutting out our logo, um, is that tens of kilowatts are quite easily obtainable in spots which uh, give you affluence uh, which is 10 to the 5 times greater than the surface of the sun. So, Another thing I'd like to point out, Brad, is that um, you introduced us uh, to NM nautical miles, uh, talking about accuracies of something like one NM. I have to tell you this, but in my world, NM stands for nanometers, right? <laughs> one nanometer is about uh, a few atoms wide. So once again, it points out this incredible difference uh, which means that potentially positional systems um, using optics can be microns. So we're not there yet, but let's have just a, a few thoughts about that. So who needs a stable time phase reference? Well, I just listed a few here. Um, many of you will know a lot more about them than I do. But synchronous data networks is an important uh, point where you need time distribution. Cell phone telephony, time stamping financial trades. This is a biggie, guys, a real biggie. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Interferometric uh, telescopes for astronomy, giving you a synthetic aperture. Optical gyroscopes, um, which um, I'll talk about a little later. Um, but who needs minimum latency and transit time? Because that's another thing. You know? Optical fibers are made of glass and it's not as fast as the speed of light in vacuum. So we'll talk about that. And our financial trader guys really like to get their trades in early. So the closer they are to the exchange, the happier they get, or give them a something that exceeds the speed of light um, in a fiber. So and here's another observation. You can't beat vacuum for loss, speed, or stability. And, you know, I, when I was looking at putting this talk together, I figured out that even the GPS guys worry about the instability of the ionosphere and have to correct for it and all this kind of stuff, which surprised me. I didn't know that. Um, so, but in, in, a, in a fiber, you've got an even bigger problem. Right? It varies much more um, with, with temperature. So here's one of the things that people like to do. Um, this is the very large telescope interferometer that's currently being assembled on Paranal Mountain. Uh, by the European Union. And what it's showing here is uh, the various telescopes and what they want to do is they connect them together to give you a synthetic aperture which um, is rather like a phased array, right? So uh, you have to keep these interferometrically stable. And what they've actually plotted on here is a vacuum path because you have to keep these to a fraction of, uh, of a micron. And that's tough, right? So, um, there's another application, um, the data centers. People really worry about the transit times between machines. Um, there's 20,000 kilometers of fiber per data center in Facebook alone. And 
30% advantage by traveling in air or vacuum is a big advantage. Gyroscopes, well, here's another one, um, GPS flywheeling, for example. So you may not know this, but um, one of the, the world's leading gyroscopes at the moment is this thing here. Uh, this is an optical fiber coil. It's a Sanyak interferometer. And uh, most uh, of the modern airliners are now navigated with these things as well as GPS. So when you go through a tunnel, if you've got one of these in your car, of course, um, it will keep you on the straight and narrow. So many applications that you will be well aware of, uh, of course, in defense uh, and, uh, and satellites. So in this case, the performance is actually limited by the glass core for two reasons. One is, that, as I've noted to you, that the, as the temperature changes, the size of the coil gets a bit bigger and the refractive index changes. Um, and, uh, and another rather more uh, clever idea um, which is called the Shoup effect. So if you, do, if you take a traveling thermal wave going across here, it affects one side before the other, and therefore this produces an apparent rotation, and that's a problem. They have to do some very clever and expensive coil winding to try and overcome that. So here's to introduce you with a possible solution. Now let me get you excited in some of this stuff. So this is what we call a vacuum waveguide. See, the problem with vacuum is that, of course, light diffracts. Well, all electromagnetic waves di diffract in a vacuum, right? So, so we've got to figure out a way to make a vacuum inside a guided wave structure. And this is it. Uh, these are called microstructured fibers or photonic band gap fibers. And only about 0.1 of the light or less travels in this clever structure around here, which is a resonant or anti-resonant structure. That's giving you incredibly low loss, potentially, no nonlinearity, and all of the things that you might expect from a vacuum, and this is what they actually look like. So, vacuum fiber technology is what I'm calling it. Now, the other interesting thing about these fibers is that they ignore, to a large extent, the material from which they're made. And that's profound. It means you can start thinking about making fibers from glasses which are incredibly cheap, glossy, um, uh, polymers, and it means also that you can, you can go out into the infrared, so here we go again, 0.01% in this case, a transmission loss at the moment, um, about a couple of dBs per kilometer. That's improving almost daily with the low latency we've seen about phase insensitivity. Surprise, surprise. They're radiation hard as well because remember I told you that it doesn't really care about the loss of the uh, material that, uh, that can, from which it's constructed. So you can do IR transmitting and all this you would expect from a vacuum, right? So uh, here's what one looks like. This is the most amazing thing. You know, th this is about the width of your hair across here. These little cylinders inside, a 40 micron mode inside there. Um, these little things are what are called anti-resonant rings, meaning that there's no light. They're exactly um, the wrong size to be able to allow light to go into uh, these little things. Um, so, um, and there's the thickness, uh, 359.6 nanometers. That's not nautical miles, okay, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what the mode looks like. You know, this is quite extraordinary stuff. Um, and this has just been emerging in, in the last few years. Um, so, um, I always find, you know, as an engineer, this, this uh, well, as a, my physicist side, I know this is true, but my engineer size I've got, says I've got to show it. So uh, even though we know it works, here it is. Um, and this is the transit time um, for one of these hollow core fibers, and this is a standard fiber here. So surprise, surprise, 30% faster, right? And here's the phase insensitivity. Um, once again, because it's nearly a vacuum, um, this is what the variation would be um, going into an interferometer. Um, it's about two picoseconds per nanometer per kilometer per degree K. What does that mean? Um, that's about a third of a millimeter um, in transit time difference. And it's about 20 times smaller than conventional fibers. And we can improve that because we can make it from different materials, which will have zero expansion coefficient. So let me finish. Air core fiber for the speed of light trading. Um, a huge financial opportunity. So these are going in as we speak. 
uh, experimentally to just get yourself apparently 30% closer to the exchange than we currently are. And it's a lot better than what they use at the moment, which is microwave links. So I hope that's given you some um, food for thought. And thank you very much.